Good morning. This, uh, devotion this morning is a worthy sacrifice. In the church, Malachi is mostly known for his words concerning tithing, but there's much more strong meat in this last little book of the Old Testament than we often give it credit for. Malachi 1 and 6, a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests, that despise my name. In our lives, there are those to whom we give honor. To some level or another, we learn respect. Really, we learn to respect our parents when we were young. They taught us the importance of acknowledging authority that we would certainly encounter in life. That uncomfortable feeling when a police car turns in behind you and begins to follow you is a perfect example of that behavior. Even the most careful and conscientious drivers will experience this feeling. While it's true that there are many who despise authority in any form, Malachi here is addressing the priesthood. He's not addressing everybody. He's addressing specifically the priesthood. Now this is analogous to those who serve God today, since we are to be a kingdom of priests. As Christians, and even more so as members of the Church of God, our default behavior should be to respect authority. But this is only a shadow of the respect that we should have for the one who created us and then suffered in our place to make a way of escape for us. Continuing with Malachi 1, 6 through 8. And you say, wherein have we despised thy name? Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? Unlike those over us in the flesh, God requires a higher level of honor and reverence. In the flesh, our leaders are satisfied with compliance to their direction and a satisfactory completion of their requirements. But we must hold God to a higher standard of reverence. Since he sees beyond our, our actions, he actually sees our motivations. He peers into the deepest recesses of the heart where even we may not be aware of the innermost source of our drive, as these who are unaware that by their actions they were despising the worthy name of the creator of all things. Through the years, the priesthood had become weary of the continu their continual efforts and they could see no apparent blessings. Looking back, we can see that they had ceased to serve God faithfully long before. And this behavior was simply a symptom of their fulfilling the letter of the law with no concern for the spirit. They, they may never have actually spoken the words, the table of the Lord is contemptible, but their actions made their hidden sins evident. Such men would gladly give gifts to the wealthy and the influential men of their time in hopes of receiving honor and praise of men in return. But their temple service was simply a position of pride so that they could see themselves as elevated above the common man. In their minds, it was not a privilege for them to have the opportunity to serve God so closely. It was only a means to an end that had nothing to do with pleasing the Lord and everything to do with their own pride and vainglory. <clears throat> Malachi 1 and 9, And now I pray you, beseech God, that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been by your means. Will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts? They had assured the people that they were praying for them. But what good are prayers from men such as these? Would God hear their prayers simply because they were part of the priesthood? Would he respond quickly to their requests even though they were teaching the people the same irreverence by their actions? Malachi 1, 10 and 11. Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on mine altar for naught. 
I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name. And a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. To the priesthood here, the, uh, to these the priesthood was a burden and not a blessing. It was back to the daily grind each morning. They saw this type of work as menial labor for such highly respected individuals as themselves. They expected worthy compensation if they were to condescend to such lowly responsibilities as opening doors and lighting fires. Malachi 1, 12 and 13, but ye have profaned it, in that ye say the table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. Ye said also, Behold, what a weariness it is, and ye have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts, and ye brought that which was torn, and the lame and the sick. Thus ye brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? The sacrificial law ended on Calvary, but God still requires faithful service. Today we sacrifice our time and our efforts to God. Do we despise his worthy name by giving him what's left over of our time and resources after we've had our own fill? Do we give him five minutes here and ten minutes there and consider ourselves faithful prayer warriors? Do we read a chapter or two and claim to be students of God's holy word? Malachi 1 and 14, But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Jesus would later uh, proclaim to the descendants of these priests in Matthew 21 and 31, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Jesus is worthy of the very best that we have been given. After all, he's the one who supplies for our every need. When he sent his son, God could do no better. Will we be satisfied to give God our leftovers? Or will we gladly surrender our best, knowing that any loss in this life will be well worth a single moment in his presence? Are there any prayer requests this morning?